thank you for that very slow, nice stall. The presentation is currently being downloaded as we speak, and it shall appear here shortly. My name is Edward van Kirk, as you know, and uh, yeah, you stole my introduction. I own a bar, and uh, <laughs> I um, it, yeah, it was a while ago we decided to to, to open a bar uh, last year, mi middle of last year or so, and um, we realized there's a bunch of software you need to run a bar. Firstly, you need the point of sale system. Um, and the point of sale can be simple, like it can be uh, a till. Or you need something more complicated that has uh, stock control and has all sorts of other things. But we decided that's fine. That's been done before. It's all retail stuff. We'll just download, buy, whatever, some sort of product. Which is fine. Um, something we wanted to do about in the bar from, from the very beginning was, um, I don't know if you've seen the musical Cabaret, where Sally Bowles, uh, it's Berlin, 1939, and she, she walks into the Kit Kat Club in Berlin, and she sits down at a table and just starts dialing the other tables, um, or dialing nine to order a drink from the bar, on these old-fashioned rotary dialers. So I thought, that's what I want in my bar as well. Um, how's my presentation coming along? It's he says, yes, okay. So, um, so uh, we thought, well, how are we going to uh, do that? Uh, well, phone systems aren't new. They've been around. Okay, that, that's uh <laughs> I'll skip past the... Uh, okay. All right, I'm going to go back just a second. I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to talk about. So there's this antique phone system that we want. Um, I also wanted more control over access. Who's going to have different accesses to parts of the bar? There's, you know, there's a stock room and there's uh, all sorts of things there. The point of sale that we eventually decided just to write ourselves in Python. And then now we're opening a theater up there, so we're also sort of doing compu tickets in Python as well. Okay, so the phone system. Um, uh, Astros could be an obvious choice um, if you wanted to have your own phone system that you could plug and do all sorts of stuff into. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to install Asterisk. I have many times, and I've failed to ever get it to work. However, uh, we always, I'm using it at the moment. I'm getting somebody else to install it. So I, I couldn't do it. I, well, there were too many options, too many hardware configurations. And were these antique phones ever going to work? Probably not. So let me show you some pictures of the antique. Well, that, that's a more modern one with the, uh, that's from like the, the 80s or something. There's uh, some, you might recognize those pay phones from the 80s as well. Um, this, this is an even older one. This is, this is um, well, it's a replica of an older one, but it's an old itself. It's a replica of a replica of, of that's itself antique. Um, and then there's some weird ones. That is, um, is it a table? Is it a phone? Yes, it's a table phone. Um, <laughs> this, this over here is a floor standing phone as well, which is, uh, yeah. They're all slightly different with the dialing mechanisms. They've got slight differences. So um, I got some Arduinos, and um, uh, that's not an Arduino. That's a uh, the phones needed a little preamp just to get them going. Took a picture of it. That's an Arduino. and. Um, I didn't actually have to program anything on the Arduino. Arduinos come standard with this uh, sort of c communication protocol called Fermata. And uh, Python has a very nice little, um, uh, well, somewhere there's a library called PyFermata, which happily, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's for when you're using Python uh, Arduinos when they're still plugged in. So it just, you know, you have each of the uh, pins and stuff that's on the Arduino. You can readily access them in Python. So as you can see there, I'd say, board equals PyFormata Arduino, whichever port it's on, like USB something. And here I just say, uh, I can read the, the status of that pin. A for analog, five is pin five, and I as I want to read it as an input. And then it tells me the value of that five. So because it's analog, that would pin would be an integer between zero and 255. Um, sorry, that would be an integer between zero and 55. Something wrong? Stop speaking amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, so that's PyFormata, very cool tool, so I thought I'd tell you about it. Um, telephones, I thought it was a bit simpler when I thought, as, you know, you pick up, you dial, you speak. Um, you know, I started, every, it, it, it took a little bit more. Um, so they're on hook in the beginning. 
uh, and then you pick it up, and then you need some sort of dial tone. So um, at the moment you get my voice saying, welcome to Alexander, I put on this poncy voice, welcome to Alexander Bar. Um, that's what it does over here. And then uh, as you're dialing, there's these pulses, but I have to sort of keep track of whether it's still part of the same number or whether you've finished dialing the number. So it sort of loops around here in the mid-dial section until I haven't had a pulse in a while, and then it, I realize that that's actually a number you're trying to dial. So if you're dialing uh, uh, 222, for example, that will then, well, 222 is actually the BBC World Service. I sort of stream that off the internet. So 222 will take it straight to a stream, and I'll, I'll fetch the, the, the stream from another thread from um, BBC, and you can listen to any news updates if you need to. The conversation is a bit boring in the bar. Um, <laughs> then if you hang up, it will go back to uh, on hook. Uh, you just have to hang up for more than uh, 200 milliseconds, uh, and that's considered a hang up. So uh, then there's other things. You can dial another table. That will take you to a ringing section. Uh, I was going to get a nice ringing tone, but I couldn't find one, so it's just me going ring, 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 ring. And... <laughs> And hopefully the other table will, will answer. Sometimes they don't, it gets a bit noisy. And that then will take you into a call where you can try and speak to each other through that homemade preamp that I showed you earlier. I, I don't actually use the busy, the busy uh, state because uh, how boring you phone somebody and it's busy. This isn't a real phone system. Uh, rather, I, you can break into someone's call. <laughs> it, it does warn them. It says, someone's breaking into your call. And then you can have a three-way conference. Um, if you want, you can also hang up. Uh, 200 milliseconds. Uh, you can leave comments. Um, the bar, the bar phone is slightly di different because I figured there'll be lots of people phoning the bar at the same time. So then you go into a queuing system where you've got my voice saying, uh, "Your drinks are important to us." <laughs> um, um, I must log. Okay, uh, there's some other things I'm. Which uh, you, you just I uh, made a text thing to sort of have a fuzzy time. You know, you don't want the exact time when you're in a bar. You want sort of what's it approximately. So I push that through eSpeak, and it comes out as a talk. You know, it's about half past one. Also, um, if you want to know what's playing on the on the on the uh, on the sound system, we use Clementine that runs on Ubuntu, and there's a, a Python Dbus you can you can use to to query what what song's playing, and it'll eSpeak that to you. Um, sometimes it's sort of Spanish, that doesn't work so well. Um, but it also tweets it on, on, on Twitter, so you can just look up in there and see what song's playing. Let me just check whether I got it. Uh, you can also skip the song and change the volume, but I'm not telling you which number that is, that's for me. <laughs> yeah, question. Uh, the, the comment, oh, you can leave a comment about the bar, and that will then um, email that to me as an OG file. <laughs> uh, also, we close at 2 a.m., because otherwise, please get angry. And uh, so then the, for the phones, we'll just say, you know, we're now closed. Please go. I think I've done everything. Okay. Uh, so I, th I would think that a phone system would be sort of more sort of event driven, but it's not. It's just a big loop. Um, there's, I used a tool called Jack D, which is, um, I, I couldn't quite figure out how to talk. Oh, so, so the phone system is just, a, a, I bought a 10 channel sound card and uh, with 10 microphones and 10 headphones. And then they just get wired through uh, abused Cat5 cables to all the phones. Um, and uh, I've I battled talking to Elsa directly, but I found this cool thing called Jack D, which uh, will talk to Elsa and present all the microphone information um, as NumPy arrays. Um, so uh, that's what I do. The, I just get all the microphone stuff, and um, uh, I split it. Into, into columns, so, and then for each phone, depending on the state that it's in the previous thing, I either decide which uh, buffers from other conversations need to, be, would need to come in, whether there's buffers from the BBC World Service that need to come in, or, or whatever, from eSpeak, whatever, and um, that's the, for each phone I do that, and then I blend them together, and I v-stack it together, and I send it back to Jack D as I read in the next buffer. And that's it. Oh, then there's also the Arduino bit where I pick up the, the pulses. Yeah. There is a dark picture of my friend Colin who's retrofitting a phone. That's just connecting the microphone to the microphone and the headphone to the headphone. There is um, the first control box we made. We actually had the preamps inside here, which was a bit silly in retrospect because sort of preamps should be closer to the microphone, not on the end of a very long line that goes around the whole bar. 
Um, that's control box two. And the inside of it, you see we've got space for eight more phones coming soon. And that's, that's, that's a ridiculous phone installed. And uh, there's, there's the bar phone, which is behind the bar. That's we also added, the, the bar people couldn't hear it half the time, so we added a, a flashing red light. So when you dial the bar, it goes. It also plays a, su uh, a ringing sound through the sound system, and then the flashing red light. OK, door access. So OK, that's a really silly picture. Um, it's just a, a white covering that you use in household thing. But behind there is a little um, RFID uh, reader, uh, an ID20. Um, which um, is quite cheap, and that just talks to another Arduino. I bought them in bulk. <laughs> um, the problem with the Arduino, I mean, I would probably use something else now. You get you get much more um, powerful things like Raspberry Pis and and uh, other stuff. But at the time, Arduino was just like the coolest thing. It's still pretty cool. Um, it's only got one serial interface, and maybe a second one if you're willing to do it in software. Um, but I wanted to, uh, you know, the, the door access control, I've got, got a eight different doors, and I wanted to save on Arduinos, uh, but the Arduinos themselves are already using the RS-232 to talk to my API, so uh, to talk to the PC, uh, which, you know, to query the database to see if to open the door or not for the various people presenting their tags. Um, so I had a problem, and I looked online, and I couldn't find a solution. Everybody said, you can only do maximum of two serial interfaces. And here I had a read from nine. So what I did is I made a thing where I just scan all of them very fast to see if there's any activity somewhere, and then quickly attach to that one and try and catch the end of the signal being read out, which I missed like the first two bytes. It's fine. <laughs> uh, that's just the box picture to see. That's inside one of the boxes. Arduino, there's all the uh, triacs that have to power the strike mechanism for the door. And that's all through abused point of sale systems, uh, abused uh, CAT5 cabling. Um, okay, so why did I make a point of sale system? Um, I got sort of, with Python you get sort of brave and you think that's going to be easy. Um, we already had a bit of accounting system that we'd hobble together with cherry pie and, and, and a whole bunch of jQuery things and whatever. So we thought, for, um, fine, my friend Nicholas and I, uh, we, we actually were using another open source thing called Unicenter, which um, had a bit of a problem that if uh, two, two waiters were looking at the same table, they'd see completely different bills, which annoyed us. So, um, so it was Christmas Day and we were closed, and Nicholas and I decided, we need a new pause. Let's just write it. It'll be faster. So <laughs> we did. Uh, we used uh, GCK3. It's not particularly pretty, but it does its job. Um, and uh, I used some more RFIDs so you, the, the waiters can log into it as well, although they keep using their tags. But um, uh, yeah, I'm going to just, um, I mean, that's pretty pretty boring stuff. Um, but uh, there's a lot in there, and um, yeah, it's quite cool. There's the point of sale at a distance. And. Now there's a theater upstairs as well. So now we decided we need to have tickets. Um, and this is the cool thing. I mean, if we hadn't had written our own point of sale system, you know, we haven't had written all these things, then we couldn't like do all this sort of interaction so quite so easily with all you know proprietary point of sale systems and so on. So um, this is some shows that's coming upstairs. Nicholas made a little WordPress plugin to um, grab all our future performances. Of course, it gets a bit complicated. You have different seating layouts and and ticket prices and, and, and stuff. So it always takes a bit longer, but it's there. And it directs, it's completely directly into our point of sale now. So if you, could, you can go and you can book online, and that just is a, an open table on what you can, you can go then walk into the bar and say, I'd like to pay for the, for the booking I ordered. And they can, you can buy a beer at the same time if you want. Nicholas uh, was my partner who developed like half the stuff. And Colin Bray was the guy who was doing all the electronics and stuff, so they need special mention, and that's the end of my slides. And question time. I'm sure there's plenty. That was, a, <laughs> that was an amazing talk. I, I <laughs> can't wait to come to your bar. Okay. You've got plenty of time, so. Uh, hi. 
uh, is there any chance that you'll be making your software open source, like yes. the point of sale software? Yeah. Oh, you know, in the beginning, I thought um, uh, if we write our own software, then we can sell it and make lots of money. Um, problem with that is that it's actually not so easy just to just take something you've written for yourself and and commercialize it, industrialize it, and then become this huge empire that sells loads of these things because you need people to support it, and then people are going to phone you in the middle of the night and so point of sale systems charge a lot of money. I was talking to somebody earlier. They charge a lot of money. So you think there'd be a huge margin, but it's just not enough. Um, so it's going to be open source. I haven't actually, I'm not even on GitHub, but I will be soon. So I'll put it all up there, and um, despite some of it being a little bit embarrassing. Next question. Um, there's. Yeah, well, there were all sorts of things that we um, that we wanted to add uh, in the beginning. Like I wanted, I, you know, I was worrying about the staff playing the wrong kind of music at the wrong time. You know, when the bar is empty and there's like loud music, and it's like, what? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You have empty bar needs a little bit of music. So I could track maybe how mu what the sales were like in the last hour, and, and maybe it m maybe from the v microphones of all the phones, I can detect what the approximate volume level is in the bar and at which part. And maybe I can put humidity sensors into the phones or temperature and control then the air conditioning, the volume, the playlist. Maybe. <laughs> is, is there any uh, ideas to allow people to use their own phones? In other words, if they're not sitting at a table with one of your nice phones. How, how, well, how would I interact? I would I connect the, these phones to, let's say, some other phone system, Skype or something. Um, I thought of that, and I thought probably not too difficult. I could. I th there's a way now so to to make a, a virtual sound card, and so I could get I could talk to Jack D about that, and then maybe get Skype to to use that virtual sound card as a sound card, and then somehow I don't know. <laughs> That that might that might be easier, yeah. We do have free Wi-Fi. <laughs> More questions? Yeah. We do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, um, it's co well, it's a coincidence. Nicholas and my second name is both uh, Alexander, um, and then it was nice that it was Alexander Graham Bell. What's the phone? And it begins with an A, so we'll be at the top of timeout. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Until when? <laughs> they they will pick that up because it's just a pulse, and and the the on hook and the ringer is it's attached to the same thing. So it's just uh, you just have to get the timing right, and I've got quite a broad. Uh, ray interval, you know, you c it, you, it will work, and all the calls are free anyway. So, <laughs> D does okay, it? Itemized billing is coming. So, yeah, does anyone try and dial out? Have you like well been we've monitoring that? We, we've um, sometimes people try, try and dial their own cell phone number. Um, so, if it's ten um, n digits long, um, I've st saved that into my spam database and send them an SMS. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how long have you been working on the telephone system? Um, I, I, we, the idea of the b well, the idea of the bar was maybe April last year, and then I started going to like antique markets. We got a couple of phones from like the Milneton flea market and some from Cork Bay uh, antique shops, and we started playing with it. Then we weren't exactly sure how. I mean, I initially thought you just pick up the phone and there's like a funny message or something, and then it it just that wasn't good enough. I need they had to work, you know. Um, so it, we were fiddling with it on and off between actual work, and um, so yeah, it took it took a couple of months, but not full time. Um, I can't remember. Uh, I think I just saw it online or Slashdot or somebody told me or I, d I can't remember. 
Over there. Uh, Nicholas did the GTK3 interface part, so I, I, I didn't actually do that part myself. Are you, uh, whoa. Are you worried about the uh, security, having implemented it yourself? Because I know how to hack RFID stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, not really. Um, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, th half the time they leave the door open. So that I mean, um, th th we could have done fingerprints. I was t talking to Simon the other way, but the problem with fingerprints is that you only allowed nine password changes. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah? Sorry? Personalization? <laughs> we, we were thinking, because sometimes people book uh, for a birthday party or something, we thought, well, then they book the, the one side room. And I thought, well, for that room, it's like, you should know that it's their birthday and, and stuff. But I was kind of busy. <laughs> I think I would I would appreciate a RFID tag, and then I can go and deposit some money into your account and get discounts and get not necessarily discounts, <laughs> just get get my you know purchases taken off yeah. my RFID tag as I purchase. Yeah, well then I'd be more worried about security issues. Turn a cab. Other bars that have antique telephone systems. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't have an answer for that. I would think I would be in the same position. Half of the stuff is 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 mostly functional, with all the a whole bunch of other stuff sort of hanging, not yet implemented, commented out, um, and uh, I think it's in a permanent state of just re you know the the first version that I wrote you know is you had I throw it away. I mean it was nonsense, um, but you learn as you go along, and then you refactor and you keep refactoring. I think it's an ongoing process. You're never finished. Cool. Edward, <laughs> okay. thank you very much. That was